Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Fisherman Norby. I'm out here again at the pond today. I know you guys have been seeing a bunch of pond episodes. I just love catching these giant panfish, giant bluegill. I'm going to show you something special, um, something you can do to help you get more bites uh, is, is to know what they're feeding on. So I got my little bait net out here and there's this little creek flowing into my pond and I'm going to try to catch these little minnows that have been swimming around, see what they look like and that's what these bluegill are probably feeding on these tiny little minnows i see all the time so we're gonna do that and then i got my fly in a bubble again and i'm gonna compare the fly i've been catching these bluegill on to the minnows i catch and just to see the the resemblance see if they're the same size and just why the bluegill are hitting that fly i tied on because i tied a white one on the other day they wouldn't touch it i tied a black one on that was small and i caught a few but then i really put this this one on i'll show you here in a minute and crushed them so we're gonna see if they're hitting it again today it was sunny the other day it's cloudy today so I'm excited to see if it makes a difference, weather conditions. But first off, let's catch one of these little minnows. Missed him. Oh no, I got a couple. Look at that. That is what the bait looks like in this pond. Right there, once he quits wiggling. Look at that. So you want a fly that's about that big. It's got some shine to it. Okay. So you want a fly that's got some shine to it, whether that's kind of shad color shine or a little chartreuse i like to use and here's some more minnows let's see if see if we can get a better sense all right wow there we go all right look at this guys that tells you exactly what you want to use they're all the same they all have a little shine to them and they're all about an eh, inch three quarters of an inch long they're not very big this is the biggest one of them all right there and he's about inch inch and a quarter so we're gonna put uh, my little shiny chartreuse fly on with some white in it um, about the same length as these minnows see if they hit it so the fly I've been using is about that exact same size check it out super tiny there you go and it's got a little shine too those minnows have a little shine and they're a little translucent um, so we're gonna we're gonna cast this out here today, but yeah, that was kind of cool So that's why they're biting them. I think it's the same size of the forge in this pond right now uh, So let's get to fishing There's one Woo, All right, little fighter There we go this is a great way to catch them, guys. Okay. Little guy. Oh, he swallowed it. Swallowed that thing. Got my pliers with me this time, so definitely need those when you're fishing these tiny little flies. Come out easy. There he goes. Just a little guy. It's hard to get your fingers down a fish's mouth if you don't have pliers, especially when they swallow that fly in or tiny tiny bluegill let's get another one boom that fish sucked it all the way under oh that's a fighter Whew. that fish hit it hard let's see what we got oh yeah red ear beautiful red ear guys beautiful look at that Man, he ate it too. He wanted it. Yep, that's a decent one. That'll work. There you go. See you, buddy. Awesome. Now they're getting bigger. He wasn't that far out compared to the last couple. So I'll try a little bit closer than I've been casting. Let's see if we get another one to smoke it, man. He took that bobber, that bubble clean under when he hit it before I could even set the hook. Oh, another one hit it. Same thing. Took the bobber under, he just got off. Tangled me all up. There's one. Oh, smoked it. Yep, we found them, guys. Had to walk around the pond a little bit. You guys didn't see how much I was fishing before I found them here. Probably made about 20 casts all over this pond. I made two or three casts and then I walk on down and two or three more. Now they're biting. There we go. Beautiful bluegill. 
That one didn't quite swallow it like the last few. There we go. Let's get another one. Boom. Yep. Three casts in a row here. We got another fighter. This thing feels like a good one. Come on. Can't pull too hard when you only have a uh, two pound test leader on here. I got four pound test on my main line. Only two pound test on. This bluegill could easily break it. Oh my gosh, look at that. This bluegill got hit, got hooked or something. Oh, it looks like a snapping turtle took a chunk out of him or a catfish or something. That's a pretty big gill right there. Look at my hand next to him. That's a good gill. Wow. Biggin. There's a lot bigger ones in here though. Believe it or not, we're gonna catch them. That's awesome. We found them now. Boom. This is crazy, guys. Back to back to back to back. Woo. Come on. This is a good one too. That's so fun. So fun. Lights out. Throw a fly the same size as the food they're eating. You're gonna catch fish, guys. And if you throw a little fly in a bubble setup, you know, it works if you match the same size with the jig you're throwing, kind of match the color. But if you're throwing a fly with tiny line, they will not pass that up. You just got to find them. Right there. Boom. Smoked it. Come here, gilly. Oh, that's not a bluegill. Check that out, guys. That's a crappie. Heck yeah. Man, they are feeding today. Got us about a nine inch crappie. That'll work. There we go. Beautiful. That's what it's about right there. We might even catch a bass on this lure. Um, this tiny little jig looking lure. This looks like a little minnow, about the same size as what we caught earlier. That's awesome. I really want to see how many are sitting in this spot. That's already seven bluegill. And I'm gonna stay here until I quit catching them. So I'm not gonna put all of them in the video for you guys, but I'll let you know at the end how many I caught. This is crazy. They're just biting. Oh, I got bit right there. He just tapped it though, he didn't take it. Yep, another one. Ooh, that was right where that crappie bit. I thought I was gonna catch another crappie. Smoking them. Boom. Oh, that was a fighter there. That was a big one. Oh my gosh. No way. No way. Look at the size of this crappie, guys. He smoked it. Oh my gosh. Look at that. He smoked it. I literally watched him eat it too, right in front of us. Wow. That's about a 11 incher. That's a good one. That's crazy. My goodness. Look how big his mouth is. See, you, buddy. Wow. <laughs> I guess that's another tip for you guys. Even though I've been catching them all way out there, make sure you keep reeling it in all the way because he, he bit it right next to me. Okay, so we've caught two crappie and a handful of bluegill, probably six or seven already. This is crazy, guys. They're biting so well. Just matching the same size with a little shine like those minnows had. Those minnows had a silver shine. I'm using kind of a chartreuse, a chartreuse shine with a little white on the tail, but they're crushing them. So we're gonna keep going here. I'm gonna see how many I can catch. I got about an hour and they're just going nuts. Once you find them, they're loaded up, especially in the spring this time of year. They school up in this colder water. So it's a great time to catch them. You just gotta search for them until you find them. Let's get back out there. Boom. Been down to wash my hands. Just cast out there, I already got bit. Second to hit the water. Feels like another good one. Oh yeah, oh yeah. The bluegill fights so hard. My goodness, look at the size of this one. Jeez, look at that yelly belly. 
What a good yelly belly. Look at that yelly belly. My goodness. It's awesome. See ya. Another yelly belly. There's one. Smoked it. Feels like another good one. Yep. Fighter. Wow. Oh my gosh. He ate the whole thing. Ate the whole thing. Wow. Alright. Get out my pliers again. That is why you bring pliers right there. Last few times I've been out, I've been trying to get them out with my hands. A lot easier. Just a dink. Dinker. Another good one. That one's an orange belly. OJ belly. Boom. This is too easy, guys. Another one that swallowed it. Goodness. Ate that whole thing. There we go. Boom. Good one. Good one. Whoo. Wow. Whoo, that's a big one. Big old yelly belly. Swallowed it. Look at that, guys. They're just swallowing this jig. Give them something that looks like what they're eating. They are not going to pass it up. Just getting back in the shop, guys. We caught a bunch of fish today. I stayed out there about an hour, hour and a half, and caught, I think, around 40. I, I lost count. They were biting like crazy. Hope you guys enjoyed that. They're just crushing that fly. Really cool. So make sure you match the hatch in your ponds. you catch some good fish. But with today's Sunday episode, I want to share with you guys a verse. Romans 8, 5 through 6. It says, Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, meaning worldly things, um, sinful things. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. So they're talking about the Holy Spirit, you know, have your mind set on things uh, above, things that are good, things that are pleasing to the Lord. So it says the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. There you have it. If you're living according to your sinful nature, here thinking about worldly things, it leads to death. Um, nothing, nothing good comes out of it. Whatever sin you're caught up in, whatever sin you get stuck in, um, nothing good comes out of it, and it's not pleasing to the Lord. But when your mind is set on things above, it's going to be pleasing to the Lord. You're going to get peace out of it. You're going to get joy out of it. And uh, I just want to encourage you guys, set your mind on things above today. Don't live according to the flesh, but live according to the Spirit. Um, pray to God. Get in His Word. Read the Bible, and you'll draw near to Him, and He'll draw near to you guys. Um, so I just want to give a little example of that. Our pastor shared. He said, you know, if, if you're trying to do a diet, if you constantly feed yourself crap, if you feed yourself ice cream, I love ice cream. Uh, there for a while I got on an Oreo and milk diet. Um, not good, not good at all. And my body started craving that. I had Oreos and milk for like a week straight, like 10 Oreos and I, I had to Google, is it bad? How bad is it to eat 10 Oreos every single night? I did it for like a week straight and it's, it's really bad. You put on a lot of weight. But anyways, my body was craving those sweets because that's what I was feeding it. That's what I was feeding it. And my wife and I, we just got done doing the keto diet, low carbs. We did it for two months. January and February and man after about two weeks in on that diet my body was craving like chicken salad super healthy stuff and carbs didn't even like sound good yeah I craved them once in a while uh, they tempted me once in a while but I was craving the healthy things so that's an example uh, once you start setting your mind on things above um, good things, good thoughts, you're going to eventually start thinking that way. Train yourself to think that way and don't think about sinful things, things of the world. 
um, things of the flesh. So hope you guys are encouraged by that little message today. And be blessed. Go out this week and enjoy it. And forget about this coronavirus that's going on. God's in control. Don't fear, guys. There's nothing to fear. Um, just put your fear in the Lord, and he'll, he'll get you through whatever comes your way. So be blessed. We'll catch you next time here on Fishing with Norby.